All right, so we'll go ahead and get started. Um, first off, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to wherever in the world you might be joining us from. We are so excited to have you with us as we go into a little bit more detail of what it looks like to apply for your U.S. visa. My name is Grace Fuller. I serve as the Manager of International Experience and Engagement at the International Services and Engagement Office, and I'm joined by my colleague Jessica, who I'll invite to introduce herself. Thank you, Grace. Hello, everyone. I'm so glad to have you joining us today. As Grace said, my name is Jessica Boyle. I am an international student advisor here at the International Services and Engagement Office. My preferred pronouns are she, her, hers. Wonderful. So a few housekeeping items before we jump in. Um, you are in listen-only mode, which means you can hear us, but unfortunately we can't hear you. So the main way that we will interact today is through our Q&A feature on that Zoom menu bar. If for some reason we don't get to your questions, please know that you can always reach out to our office via icontact.ucsd.edu. And finally, we are recording, so you'll be able to access this webinar recording as well as others in about a week's time um, via inewstudentwebinars.ucsd.edu. This is also where you'll be able to sign up for any upcoming webinars. And this is just a friendly reminder um, of what kind of that Q&A feature looks like on your Zoom menu bar. Now, please note, um, we do invite folks to wait to see if their questions will be answered during the content of today's webinar, but we always have dedicated time at the end of each webinar for open question and answer. Now for some reminders from undergraduate admissions as well as our office regarding your first steps. So um, we want to encourage everyone to make sure um, if you have decided to, to come to UC San Diego and join us, um, log into your applicant portal and complete your enrollment checklist. Um, and there are two things here that I want to highlight. One is actually accepting your offer of admission. Um, some students in their excitement are like, yeah, I'm coming. And um, the way you communicate that to us is accepting that offer. That will also activate a few more steps along the way um, that will allow you to complete this checklist. And also to complete the California residency for um, tuition purposes questionnaire. So I've provided two links in the chat that should um, give you more information about both of those pieces. But once you accept your offer of admission, about two to three business days later, you will receive an email asking you to create your Triton Link Active Directory and Duo accounts. So via your single sign-on, um, this will allow you, your Active Directory is going to be what activates your student um, PID, your personal identification number, as well as your email. And these are critical. These are how we communicate with you, primarily using your UCSD email. Um, and it's also what you'll use to do a number of things, including apply for your Form I-20 or DS-2019 for your F-1 or your J-1 visa. And finally, a reminder from our office um, that I new student is another piece of kind of your enrollment checklist as international students. So on the left-hand side here, we have our home screen. You will choose your education level. So many of you will be undergraduate students. And then it will take you to the right-hand um, screen, the right-hand side of the screen, where it breaks down the process into three main steps. Um, today, we'll spend more time kind of talking about step one. Um, but please know that as you, if you want a preview of maybe what's to come, step two and three are also available to you. And this is a great resource to refer back to in the coming months. And with that, I'll hand it over to Jessica to talk about a little bit more in detail, the steps for application. Awesome. Thank you, Grace. All right, so we are going to spend today looking at how do you actually apply for your US visa stamp? Um, that would be the F-1 visa if you are planning to be an F-1 student, obviously the J-1 visa if you're planning to be a J-1 student. So if you had the chance to join us earlier this week on Tuesday for our First Steps pre-arrival webinar, um, this is how our office breaks down the visa process. We look at the visa process as comprising six steps. Um, that move you from being a newly admitted student to actually successfully being here in San Diego um, with an active international student status in the United States. Um, I am not going to go into each of these steps in depth. Um, last week, we looked at, or I'm sorry, on Tuesday, we looked at step one. 
And today we're going to look at the next three steps, steps two, three, and four. So we're gonna look at how do you actually schedule your visa interview appointment, um, what to expect when you attend that visa interview, and then once you receive your visa stamp, how do you plan your travel to the United States? You'll notice that because we are only covering steps two, three, and four in this presentation, if you have not, or if you were not able to attend our first steps pre-arrival webinar um, earlier this week, or if you have not yet requested your Form I-20 or DS-2019, you must do that first, and you must receive your Form I-20 or DS-2019 from our office before you can schedule your visa interview for your visa stamp. So um, I encourage you to visit inewstudentwebinars.ucsd.edu next week to watch the recording of our First Steps pre-arrival webinar. It will be posted early next week sometime, and or to visit our INEW student website, which Grace just went over, inewstudent.ucsd.edu under step one, you will find the instructions for how to request your Form I-20 or your Form DS-2019. You must request and receive that from us first before you are able to apply for your U.S. visa stamp. All right, so let's dive into step two, which is how do you actually schedule your visa interview? So being able to schedule your visa appointment um, involves completing two things. One is to submit the official online non-immigrant visa application, which is also called the Form DS-160. And the second item is to also pay the CVIS I-901 fee. We're going to talk about how you do both of these things. <clears throat> All right. So um, you must submit the Form DS-160 online non-immigrant visa application through the website of the local U.S. Embassy or consulate where you plan to interview for your visa stamp. Um, this is typically going to be the U.S. Embassy or consulate that is closest to you. If you do not know which U.S. Embassy or consulate is nearby to where you are, you can visit usembassy.gov look up your country and then see under your country um, the available U.S. embassies or consulates in your country. Um, submitting the DS-160 will involve paying a $185 visa fee. It is sometimes also referred to as an MRV fee. Um, so know that in submitting the DS-160, you will be expected to pay that fee as part of the submission process. There are um, some countries that have you pay that fee actually at the time of your visa interview, but for the majority of countries, you'll be expected to pay that fee when you are submitting the DS-160 online. So you will want to look at the website for the U.S. Embassy or Consulate where you plan to apply for your visa stamp and read through their instructions on how to apply for a non-immigrant visa. Use those instructions to prepare the required documents and information that you will be asked to submit as part of the DS-160 application. Um, you will also need and want to have your passport and your Form I-20 or DS-2019 in front of you when you're filling out the DS-160. Um, if you have prepared beforehand, read through the instructions, you know what information is gonna be asked of you, you have the documents ready to upload, um, filling out and submitting the DS-160 should take about one to two hours. The DS-160 is going to ask you for a couple pieces of information that you will find on your Form I-20 or your Form DS-2019. So I want to take a look at um, what each of these forms look like. You see them in front of you here on the screen. As a reminder, the Form I-20 is the visa eligibility certificate for the F-1 visa stamp. And the Form DS-2019 is the visa eligibility certificate for the J-1 visa stamp. So one of the things that the DS-160 is going to ask you for is your CVIS ID number. Your CVIS ID number can be found in the, at, in the top corner of your form. If you are going to be an F-1 student, you'll find it in the top left. If you'll be a J-1 student, you'll find it in the top right. It is the number that starts with N-0-0. If you're a J-1 applicant, you will also be asked to provide your J-1 program number, which as you can see on the screen, is also gonna be kind of in the top right portion of your Form DS-2019. 
The DS-160 is also going to ask you for your field of study and your SIP code. The SIP code is the category number, kind of like an ID number that is assigned to the field of study that your UC San Diego major falls under. So the US government categorizes all the different fields of study that are taught um, or through which degrees can be earned in the United States and assigns a general name and number, a SIP code, to that field of study. So your UC San Diego major has a US government field of study and SIP code applied to it, and that is what shows on your Form I-20 or DS-2019. Um, note that the name of your field of study on your Form I-20 or DS-2019 might not exactly match the name of your major at UC San Diego, and that is okay. That is actually very common because, um, again, the U.S. government has assigned just a general field of study category to um, majors across the United States. So um, when the DS-160 is asking you for your field of study and your SIP code, you should put what you find in, as you see on the red in the red box on the screen here, what you find on your Form I-20 or DS-2019. The DS-160 is also going to ask you for your school contact information. Um, it will ask you for the, your DSO, which stands for um, Designated School Official or your ARO, Alternate Responsible Officer, um, as well as phone number and email, contact for that person. Um, a DSO or an ARO is an international student advisor. And here at UC San Diego, you will not have a specific advisor that is assigned to you. All of the advisors at the at ISEO, our office, the International Services and Engagement Office, are um, international student advisors. And so when you are asked on the DS-160 to provide the contact information for your advisor, look at your Form I-20 or your DS-2019 in the signature box where you see an advisor's signature. You will see the name of the advisor that issued and signed your form. Just use that person's name and provide our office phone number and our office email, which is istudents at ucsd.edu um, on the DS-160. Um, you will be able to refer back to the recording of this presentation to find that contact information. It is also available for you to reference under step one on our inustudent.ucsd.edu website. All right. So once you've filled out and submitted the DS-160, you will be shown a confirmation page that looks like this. It has a barcode at the top. Print this confirmation page. Um, you will be required to bring the printed copy to your visa interview appointment. I also recommend that you save a copy of it for your own records um, as you'll want to refer back to it for information on day and time and place to attend your visa interview. Um, following successful submission of your DS-160, you will be able to access your local embassy or consulate's visa appointment scheduling tool. Every consulate and embassy, um, especially per country, uses a different system for scheduling their visa appointments, but you will be able to access that system once you have submitted the DS-160 or as part of the DS-160 application process. So. Um, once you have submitted this, you'll be able to schedule your visa interview pending um, upcoming appointment availability at that embassy or consulate. So the other item in terms of preparing and scheduling your visa interview is to pay the CVIS I-901 fee. This is a different fee than the visa fee that you pay to the consulate. This is a fee required every time an international student is issued a new CVIS ID number. So as a new international student requesting a new Form I-20 or DS-2019, you will be given a new CVIS ID number, meaning you've opened a new international student record as an F1 record or a J1 record. Therefore, you've been assigned an F1 or J1 ID number, which is called your CVIS ID. Um, make sure that you pay the CVIS I-901 fee in advance of your visa interview. You will be required when you go for your visa interview to again show proof that you have paid this fee. Um, so when you pay it, print the confirmation receipt page to show that you have paid it. Um, we recommend you pay this fee at least three business days in advance of your visa interview. However, depending on the country you are coming from, there may be certain requirements for how you pay this fee that may take longer than three business days. So I'd recommend you do some research 
when you are scheduling your visa interview. Um, so as part of just scheduling the visa interview, right, submit the DS-160, then look at this Vivas I-901 fee website, which is fmjfee.com, and figure out for my country of origin, how do I pay this fee? In some cases, it may take longer than three business days, so you want to make sure that you plan ahead, you have the time to pay this fee in advance of your visa interview because it will need to be showing as paid on your CVIS account um, when you go for your visa appointment. So a quick note, if you are a citizen of Canada or Bermuda, your visa application process is a little different because you are actually not required to apply for an F1 or J1 visa stamp. So that means you do not need to submit the DS-160 and interview at a local U.S. embassy or consulate. You do not need to do that. You do still need to request a Form I-20 or DS-2019 from our office, and you do still need to pay the CBIS I-901 fee before you cross the U.S. border and enter the United States. Um, so just be aware of that. If you are a citizen of Canada or Bermuda, I encourage you to visit travel.state.gov and search for citizens of Canada and Bermuda. If you just type that into the search bar, um, you will find information on your specific visa requirements, which are a little different um, compared to everyone else. All right, so that is how you actually schedule your visa interview. Let's go ahead and take a look at step three, which is attending your visa interview. All right, so when you go for your visa interview, there are several documents that you will be required to bring, which as of course you wanna make sure you prepare in advance. Um, so you will need to bring your passport and your passport must be valid for six months after your program start date. So um, when you look on your Form I-20 or DS-2019, you'll see your program start date listed on that form, which is the day that you are expected to be at UC San Diego to begin your program activities. Um, for most of you, that date is going to match the start of the fall 2024 quarter, which is September 23rd, 2024. And so your passport needs to be valid for at least six months after that date. You'll also want to bring your Form I-20 or your Form DS-2019. Make sure, of course, that you've printed it and signed it by hand. You'll want to bring your DS-160 confirmation page. So that's the page with the barcode that we just looked at. <clears throat> You'll also need to bring proof of payment that you have paid the two fees that are associated with the visa application process. So that's the visa fee that you pay as part of the DS-160 application. If you were required to pay that prior to your interview, so remember that in some cases, you may actually be required to pay it at your visa appointment. So even more reason to, again, make sure you have read through the instructions uh, your, um, on the website for the embassy or consulate where you'll be applying so you know when and how you'll be required to pay that visa fee. And you'll also want to bring proof of payment that you've paid the CBIS I-901 fee. Um, when you are submitting the DS-160, in most cases, you will be asked to upload a passport photo as part of that process. However, again, in some cases, just depending on the country where you are applying, you may instead be asked to bring a passport photo to your visa interview. So look at the instructions on your embassy or consulate's website to understand, do I need to provide my passport photo when I am submitting the DS-160 online? or am I gonna to need to bring a passport photo with me to my visa interview? You'll also want to bring proof of funding documentation. This should be the financial documentation that you submitted to our office to receive your Form I-20 or DS-2019. As a reminder, you can and should review the funding requirement information on our webpage um, to learn what types of financial documents can I submit to prove that I have the minimum or more amount of funding I am required to show for the visa process. Um, so the same financial documentation that you submitted to us that was accepted by our office, you should bring to your visa appointment. And then you'll want to bring documentation of ties you have to your home country, such as your home country address and any other things that prove your obligations back at home. That list that we just looked at is a known list of required documents. However, there may be other documents that you were either required or encouraged, recommended to bring 
based on the country you are applying in, your country of citizenship, and or um, your specific embassy or consulate. So again, I can't stress this enough. Um, read the instructions on your embassy or consulate's website and make sure that in addition to the documents we just went over, any other documents that they require or recommend of you, you have prepared beforehand and bring to your visa appointment. All right, so um, let's talk a little bit about what to expect when you go for your visa appointment. So um, first thing to know is the visa interview is very fast. It goes very quickly. Um, on average, the visa interview takes 10 minutes or less. In most cases, two to five minutes is what you will experience. So it is not a ton of time. So um, in your conversation with the consular officer, you want to be brief, keep your answers short and concise, and maintain a positive attitude, of course, right? You do need to be ready to talk. The, con the consular officer is going to expect and to have a short conversation with you. So oftentimes something um, we hear from students is that they, you know, you're bringing this stack of all the documents we just went over and they expect that they will go to the interview and just be able to hand the consular officer those documents. That is not the case. The documents are there to support your conversation with the consular officer. So even though you have those documents and the consular officer is going to ask to see them. The documents cannot speak for you. You will need to speak for yourself and use the documents to support whatever you are talking about. So you should be ready to talk about your major, what you'll be studying at UC San Diego and its connection to your long-term career or life goals. Um, you should be ready to talk about your sources of funding. So um, you're bringing this financial documentation, right? How Tell the consular officer, how are you going to be paying for your educational living and travel costs? Um, if you have received a scholarship or a fellowship, that's something you'd want to tell them, whether that's some uh, funding from UC San Diego or from an external sponsor, such as if you're being sponsored by your home government or a home institution. Um, if your family or friends are contributing or supporting you financially, um, you want to be ready to tell the consular officer why and how. How are they financing your studies in the U.S. and why would they do that? What's the relationship there? Um, you also want to be prepared to discuss ties to your home country. What I mean by this is you need to be able to support with your words and your documents your non-immigrant intent in applying for an F-1 or J-1 visa stamp. That means your intent to depart the United States once you are done with your program of study. So um, be ready to talk about and show what connections or obligations do you have back home that make it likely you will return to your home country when you have earned your bachelor's degree and finished your studies at UC San Diego. And then of course, um, be prepared to have the entire interview in English. The consular officer will expect to have the whole conversation with you in English. All right, so I want to also take a moment to talk about um, common visa delays that students experience. So when you go for your visa interview, um, there are three outcomes to the visa application and interview process. One, of course, and the most common and what we hope for each one of you is a visa approval, right? Um, you go through the application process, you go to your interview, and right there at the end of the interview, the consular officer tells you, okay, you're approved for your visa. There are two other types of outcomes. The first is administrative processing. Administrative processing is a special security clearance procedure that can last up to 60 days or sometimes more. Um, it is, it, when you go for your visa interview, administrative processing is when at the end of the interview, the consular officer decides that they need more time to review your visa application and the documents that you've submitted. In most cases, if the consular officer tells you that your visa is refused or needs to be placed in administrative processing, they will give you what's called a 221G letter. So it will be a piece of paper that they hand you that will indicate your visa has been refused for administrative processing. Um, I want to call out that a visa refusal is not the same as a visa denial. 
a visa refusal means that the visa was refused in that moment because the consulate feels they need additional time to review your application. Um, if your visa is refused for administrative processing, you might be asked to submit additional documents. And typically the consular officer, when they give you that 221G letter, it's going to have information on how you submit those additional documents to the consulate via email. Um, if you are asked to provide additional documents, you want to make sure you collect those and send them back to the consulate as quickly as possible so that the consulate has the information they need to continue your visa application review. Um, if the documents the consulate asks for are um, documents you need from the university, such as information, more information about your major or research or program of study you might be involved in, or additional verification um, on your intended uh, international student status, um, contact our office. We can help you either get in touch with your college or major department or help get those documents to you if they are documents that you need from the school. Um, if you are placed in administrative processing, or I should say if your visa application is placed in administrative processing, please contact our office and let us know because we can, we'd can. we like to hear about your experience um, interviewing with the consulate and we can help guide you in terms of next steps and what to expect throughout the administrative processing process. Um, you can contact our office by um, looking at icontact.ucsd.edu. That is our contact webpage where we have all the different ways you can get in touch with us. If you are placed in administrative processing, I would encourage you to stop by our Zoom advising if you can, so that you can speak with an international student advisor um, in real time. The other type of visa delay and or outcome that you might experience is a visa denial. Visa denials are very rare, but they do happen. Um, in most cases, when someone is denied a visa, the consular officer will tell you why, and you want to take particular note of the reason that they told you. Sometimes they will give you a letter saying why the visa was denied. You want to take note of that because in most cases, um, after a visa denial, you are able to apply again. So you will have to submit the DS-160, pay that fee again, schedule a new interview. Um, but in doing that, you want to know if the consulate has told you exactly why you were denied the first visa application, right? So that you can fix that, come with new information or new documentation to address whatever the consular officer's concern was that led to the denial the first time. Um, if you are denied a visa, again, before you go to your next visa interview, please do contact our office. Again, I would encourage you to use our Zoom advising so you can speak with an international student advisor directly if possible. Um, that way we can hear about your experience during your first interview, look at any feedback the consular officer may have given you, and help you kind of plan for how you apply for that visa a second time. All right, so that is what it looks like to attend the visa interview. Um, we're gonna look at step four now, which is how um, what it looks like to get your visa stamp back and plan your travel to the United States. So upon successful completion of the visa application and interview process, so this could be your visa has been approved right when you went for your interview or you um, were placed in administrative processing, but the administrative processing has now completed and your visa has been approved. Or if you were denied a visa and applied a second time and were successful that second time around, once your visa is approved, the consular officer is going to collect your passport. And it typically will take the consulate one to two weeks to produce and affix the visa stamp on the inside of your passport. Um, note that this means you will not have your passport for approximately one to two weeks. So um, when you are planning or scheduling your visa interview, keep that in mind that uh, assuming you are that interview is successful and you are approved for the visa right there, the consulate's going to take your passport, you will not have it. So you should not plan any travel that you would typically need your passport for. Um, when the consular officer collects your passport, it is okay to ask them and you should check with them, how do you receive that passport back? Um, every consular or embassy does it a little differently. There may be options to have it mailed back to you or you might be able to go back and pick it up. Um, so ask them, how can you expect to receive that passport back? Um, so they can tell you what your options are. 
Once you have gotten your passport back with your visa stamp, you have the documents you need to be able to enter um, or seek entry to the United States. So what that means is when you are going through customs, customs is going to have to see your passport, your Form I-20 or DS-2019, and your F-1 or J-1 visa stamp, which will be in your passport. Once you have those documents, you can book your travel to the United States. And so I want to just um, point out three things that you should keep in mind about planning that travel. First is we do strongly recommend that as much as possible, you wait to plan your travel to the United States until after you've gotten your visa stamp. The reason for this is because until you have your passport, your Form I-20 or DS-2019, and your F-1 or J-1 visa stamp, you do not have the documents yet to even seek entry to the United States. So for your sake, we would encourage you to wait to put money down on a flight until you know you have the documents required to seek entry to the United States. The next thing you should be aware of in terms of planning your travel is what's known as the 30-day entry rule or your 30-day grace period. F1 and J1 students may enter the U.S. no more than 30 days prior to the program start date that is listed on your Form I-20 or DS-2019. So what this means is you want to know what that 30-day entry window is for you and make sure that when you plan your travel to the U.S., you are arriving to the United States on a day that is within the 30 days leading up to your program start date. If you are an F-1 student, the earliest date that you can enter the United States 30 days in advance of your program start date is actually printed for you on your Form I-20. So you'll find it kind of in the middle um, where you see the red box here on the screen. It is called the earliest admission date. And that means the earliest date that you can seek being admitted or admission to the United States. So look at that date on your Form I-20 and make sure that you plan your flight to arrive to the U.S. either on or after that date. If you are a J-1 student, you will need to look at the program start date that is kind of in the middle top part of your DS-2019. The program start date is the day that your program activities begin at UC San Diego. For most of you, this date is going to reflect the start of the fall quarter, which again is September 23rd, 2024. You will need to do the calculation yourself to figure out what is exactly 30 days in advance of my program start date. I want to call out that it is 30 days, not one month. So if you use one month, you may actually miscalculate what your earliest date of possible entry to the United States is. I would recommend you just Google date calculator and use a date calculator to find out if I put my program start date into that date calculator and ask it to add 30 days in advance, that is how you will find out what your 30 day entry window is. All right, and then last but not least, um, in planning your travel to the United States, we recommend you specifically plan to have two to three hours between connecting flights if the first place you will be arriving to the U.S. is not San Diego. Um, so any place that you are crossing the border into the United States is known as a port of entry. And your U.S. port of entry, the place you cross the border into the U.S., will be the first place you arrive to the United States. So if you are taking connecting flights to get to San Diego, for example, maybe you fly to New York first and the first place you land in the US is New York. And then you take a connecting flight to Los Angeles and then you take a connecting flight to San Diego. Your US port of entry is New York. That is the first place you are actually crossing the border into the United States, right? And so that port of entry will be where you go through customs. If you have ever traveled internationally before, you know that passing through customs in any country can take some extra time, right? And so for that reason, we would make sure we would encourage you to make sure you're planning your flights so that your first port of entry, you have at least two to three hours before your connecting flight to go through customs. 
when you're going through customs, um, the customs and border protection officer is going to check your passport, your Form I-20 or DS-2019, and your F-1 or J-1 visa stamp, and they'll ask you a couple questions about your plans to be a student in the United States. Um, you'll want to allow time for that process. All right, so that is steps two, three, and four, getting through the visa application process, and once you have your visa, being able to plan your travel to the U.S. Before we move into wrapping up our presentation and our time of Q&A, I wanna just do a quick recap on where on our website you can find all the information we've talked about today and more. So again, as a reminder, our inewstudent.ucsd.edu website is designed to help walk you through the entire visa process steps one through six and has a lot of additional information to help you in your journey to becoming a UC San Diego enrolled student. Um, when you go to inewstudent.ucsd.edu, you will land on this page that you see on the left of the slide. You will need to select um, your degree level, which hopefully for all of you on this presentation, you're gonna be selecting undergraduate students. You will then be taken to the screen you see on the right of the slide where you see steps one, two, and three. And again, these steps are laid out to walk you through getting from being newly admitted to arriving here at UC San Diego. So this is the visa process as we've broken it down into six steps, right? Steps one, two, and three, you will find under step one of the inewstudent.ucsd.edu website. Step four, you'll find under step two. So once you've gotten your visa stamped back, how do you plan your travel to the United States? Under step two, you're also gonna find information on housing um, in, in, at UC San Diego and in San Diego, um, completing your health and immunization requirements, information on preparing for your required orientations, and much more. These are things that you can and should be um, working on and learning about after you have completed the visa process and or while you are waiting in each successive step of the visa process. So for example, while you're waiting to get um, to your visa interview, maybe you have it scheduled, but it's not for a few weeks, you can start reading ahead to familiarize yourself with the information under step two of our website. And then steps five and six. So step five is going through customs and step six is completing the check-in process with our office once you have arrived to the US. Steps five and six on the visa process you can find under step three of our inewstudent.ucsd.edu website. So again, on the website, step three is, has information for you on what to expect at customs, um, checking in with our office, which is a required action item for you in order for us to activate your F1 or J1 status, and also um, international student orientation and just starting your life here at UC San Diego. All right, thank you so much, Jessica. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about how you can already start to get engaged with our Triton community um, before we head into our Q&A. So I'll just take a moment. If you're curious about the programs that we offer um, throughout the academic year, you can go to iprograms.ucsd.edu. So programs is a term we'll use a lot here at UC San Diego. Um, they refer to kind of like longstanding opportunities for engagement. Um, so for example, English in Action is an English conversation program where you'll meet with a native English speaker weekly throughout the course of an academic year. So programs tend to be more reoccurring in nature um, as compared to events that are a little bit of more of like a one-off opportunity. And one program that I specifically want to highlight is our Global Ambassador Program. This is a peer mentorship program that matches incoming international undergraduate students with current UC San Diego students. You can learn more about GAP by um, going to gap.ucsd.edu. And you can also scan the QR code on the screen um, and that, that will take you to the GAP Mentee application form. The iEvents calendar is our live calendar um, that's continuously populated with different events that have either a global engagement focus or are targeting our international community. 
Um, so again, every time you check back on iEvents, there will likely be new events. So I know many students will bookmark this page um, for different opportunities to, to get involved. And finally, we are active on social media. So we hope that you will follow us. Um, we're gonna about to do some giveaways. So I think that'll be really fun. Um, Instagram is popular with a lot of our students. So iStudents.ucsd, um, but we are active on LinkedIn, Facebook, and YouTube. Okay, so as a reminder, um, you can already start beginning to request your form I-20 or DS 2019 via the iPortal, as Jessica mentioned. Um, you can also start looking into on-campus housing. Um, so as a friendly reminder, our next pre-arrival webinar is going to feature housing for undergraduate students. We're going to have both our partners from Housing, Dining, and Hospitality talk about on-campus housing, but we'll also discuss off-campus housing as well. So that will be next Tuesday, um, but that is helpful for some of these next deadlines of applying for on-campus housing as well um, in mid-May when on-campus housing contracts are due. July 10th is the deadline to submit health immunization requirements. Um, so next Thursday, we'll have our colleagues from Student Health Services join us to talk a little bit more in detail about that. And then in September is a really exciting month. That's usually when we get to meet you in person. Um, so we have move in and check in and your orientations, including your college orientation, as well as international orientation or I orientation. So like I said, um, next week we'll have uh, our housing and our health webinar. Then in early May, we'll have finances and student accounts. So how to international payment options, how to add potentially like your parent as a third party um, pay payer. We'll also talk on May 3rd about how to transfer your CVIS record. On May 7th, we'll talk about student life and getting involved. And on May 9th, we'll talk about campus safety. So you can register for all of these upcoming webinars at inewstudentwebinars.ucsd.edu. And with that, we'll take some time um, for our open question and answer. So if you have any questions for us, um, any questions that maybe didn't get answered during today's presentation or pieces that you're still a little unsure about, please go ahead and take a moment and submit those now. And just as a reminder, because I see we have someone with their hand raised, we are not able to take live questions. Um, we cannot hear you because of the format that this Zoom webinar is set up in. So if you do have a question, please take a moment to type it out in the Q&A feature and submit it there and we'll be happy to answer it. Okay, so we have um, a great question of where can I sign up for future webinars? Um, so we will go ahead, I'll go ahead and put that in the chat as well. Um, but it's going to be inewstudentwebinars.ucsd.edu. And more specifically, the first drawer that you'll see there, and I'll go ahead and pull this up on the screen as well. Um, let's see. Okay, so hopefully you're now able to see inewstudentwebinars.ucsd.edu. Um, there is a drawer here called 2024 Pre-Arrival Webinars. So these webinars are focused on our students before they arrive, pre-arrival. Um, so as you can see, we already hosted quite a few webinars for our graduate students. Um, but if you're curious about setting up for the undergraduate housing webinar next Tuesday or the health um, and really the rest of them, you can go ahead and sign up for them here. If you click on the link, it will take you to our Zoom registration form. Yes, um, if parents would like to register for upcoming webinars, you are more than welcome to join us. Um, so we know that many of our students, you know, don't go through this process alone. Parents are key partners in supporting their students in their journey. So please do. Um, we think that the more people who are informed, the better. So you are welcome to join us um, for upcoming webinars. All right, Jessica, we have another question here. Um, I have been selected as an undeclared major. How would I go about declaring that major on the I-20 form? Yeah, this is a great question. So um, when you are requesting your Form I-20 or DS-2019, you will not be required to tell us what your major is. We have access to that information, of course, um, in your student record at the university. Um, the Form I-20 and DS-2019 do actually also have a 
category field of study and SIP code, if you remember us talking about the way the US government um, kind of has umbrella fields of study that they apply to different majors, right? Um, they have an undeclared um, field of study that can be used exactly for this purpose. We know that many um, students start their bachelor's degree and you're, you're going to college specifically for that, right? To figure out what you are interested in studying, what you want to do for your career. Um, so that's totally fine. Um, your Form I-20 or DS 2019 in that case will indicate that you are in an undeclared field of study. Um, when you go for your visa interview, you will want to be ready to discuss that with the consular officer because they may ask you, you know, they'll see that your field of study or major is undeclared and it is okay to say to them, I'm currently undeclared, you know, I'm not quite sure what I'm interested in, but maybe here's some things I'm thinking about. Um, in that case, you might also want to be ready to talk to them about why you chose UC San Diego, what made you want to apply there. If you're not sure what you're studying, then why was the school of interest to you, right? Um, but it's totally fine if you're in an undeclared major, that is not uncommon. Wonderful. So we'll allow just one or two minutes here for additional questions. But please know that um, if future questions should arise, you can always reach out and contact our office via icontact.ucsd.edu. Um, so that will allow you to, whether it's submitting our contact form, which are um, monitored continuously, it will also direct you to attend, if you would want, um, our advising sessions where you can speak with an international student advisor. So there are many ways to get in contact with our office. We hope to make ourselves available to you um, to support you in your journey. So no further questions has come in. Um, so we're going to go ahead and wrap up for today's webinar. But thanks again for, for joining us. Um, and we have one last question, and we will make time for it. Um, so Jessica, this question reads, um, my permanent residency visa is also being parally, parallelly processed. Um, can I apply for an F1 student visa? Yes, yeah, this is a great question. And um, it is actually the kind of question that when you ask it, me as an international student advisor, I have about five more questions I wanna ask you back to learn more. Um, so this is a good question. It's one I would encourage you to stop by our Zoom advising for and speak with an international student advisor directly um, because whether or not it would be maybe um, preferential or beneficial for you to apply for an F-1 visa it might depend on where you are at in your permanent residency process. Um, so we would have some additional questions we'd like to ask you to learn more and be able to then advise you on, in this particular situation. So um, again, um, icontact.ucsd.edu is our website with all our contact information, including the hours of availability and how to log into our Zoom advising. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great rest of your morning, afternoon, evening, depending where on the world you may be. Um, take care and we'll see you next time. Thanks everyone.